All right, everybody. Thank you again for sticking around. I've just been informed that we are ready for our next run. So I'm not going to try and butcher the game's name again, but I will very uh, happily introduce our runner Joker for the next this next uh, for this next game. So take it away. non-binary pals uh i'm joker and uh you're about to experience uh, a very interesting game a uh, very fun game from 2007 called synesthete uh this is a fantastic little um musical shooter basically essentially where you run around as the zakeman to save your world um and uh by killing enemies to the beat of the music um there's a bit of story involved in this but because we're speedrunners we really don't care and the story pops up as sentences and phrases throughout the songs and it's just kind of hard to follow along with those as you're playing so uh if you don't know the story don't worry about it uh but this is the all songs trivial uh with no tutorials so we're doing 10 songs here uh through three acts and then the final boss uh and we are uh ready to go whenever uh time will start uh when i say go and three, two, one, and go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're equipping a different spell, uh, which is Equilibrium. And we'll see that. Um, I'll explain Equilibrium a bit more uh, as we get through the game. Uh, but yeah, this is Synesthete. Um, like I said, it is 10 songs, um, all individually created uh, for this game. Uh, Synesthete was created in 2007 by students of the DigiPen Art School. Uh, they named their uh, quote-unquote studio uh, Rolling Without Slipping. Um, they built up the game from the ground up. Uh, so everything you see was created specifically for this game, its own engine, uh, all its own songs, uh, sound effects, everything like that. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the first song. It's called Townhouse. Um, it's just a very simple, basically, introduction song uh, to get you used to the mechanics and how the game plays and just kind of a little bit more of a laid-back uh, intro to the game. Uh, what you're noticing here is there are um, uh, these little blue and green beats. And as I hit the beats, uh, it'll shoot out the lasers, which will kill the enemies. Uh, so right there, I did do my first instance of Equilibrium. Uh, Equilibrium is a one of the many spells you can get throughout the game uh, that allows you to increase your size and increase your movement speed. Uh, and as your size increases, you can run and stomp on enemies. Uh, this is doubly useful because A, the bonus speed from the spell itself is useful because we're speedrunners, we want to go fast. Uh, but the other benefit is being able to stomp on enemies, uh, which can obviously speed up rooms, and especially in the last rooms of each song can help us get to the end of the song faster. So it is going to be a little bit difficult to uh, speak and play at the same time sometimes. So pardon me for if I uh, go uh, radio silent for a few seconds. And there was Townhouse. Uh, pretty simple. And that moves us on to our first boss song of the game. Uh, the song is called Gearbox, and this means uh, we get to run into the voxel king um story is the vague story is that uh the world that you're living in as the zakeman has been kind of uh overtaken and uh controlled by uh these bad guys these enemies um and they've warped each world um into their kind of own visions uh which are related to the songs uh and you have to navigate the songs because only a uh, Synesthete can do so. 
So you get to run through these songs uh, and then uh, go meet up and take down the boss. Uh, occasionally you'll see me enter into rooms and you'll see these yellow notes uh, sitting around. When you enter a room before the next loop starts, uh, you can collect these yellow notes. They'll increase your combo meter uh, or increase your health if you're missing health. Uh, the combo meter uh, essentially just tells you how, how many enemies you've killed in a row without getting hit. Um, and it also, up to a certain point, will uh, actually increase the amount of spells you have. So it can give you an, it can give you another instance of whatever spell you're currently holding on to. So it's kind of useful to go ahead and pick those up as much as you can uh, when they are showing. But ideally, you don't want them to show up because it means, or at least you don't want them to be around for too long because it means you hit it the next room with the right timing and uh, you're not behind. The interesting thing about this game is that these loops, these uh, song loops can repeat if you don't move on to the next room quick enough. Um, and usually they're in uh, eight bar uh, segments if you know anything about music. Uh, but this is our first boss, the Voxel King, uh, big fire breathing dragon. He's very easy to take down. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to bait him over to one side and then we're just going to let him kind of fire beam his way uh, and eventually he'll uh, cycle into uh, the second phase here. And this phase he's just going to uh, do that. <laughs> but that's okay. We have cleared out Gearbox. Uh, Voxel King, very easy. Uh, he does have a third cycle, but you're not going to see it here in... Um, you're not going to see it in Trivial uh, because you can just clear through him very, very quickly. Uh, next up is the last song of the first act. It is Triptonaut. Each act is set up uh, with its own kind of subgenre of uh, EDM and electro uh, which is pretty neat and again all three uh, all ten songs were created by by one person here on the team of four uh, in those various different uh, subgenres there we go so again we're just gonna go ahead and click these little uh, combo ups uh, the there are a few different types of enemies. Sorry, this one, that room's a little bit tricky. Uh, there are a few different types of enemies. There's some, uh, what look like fireworm crawler kind of things that will just uh, crawl in a path uh, along the floor. Uh, there's those spinning blades. They spin around and eventually they'll collapse in on you. Uh, so these are the little fireworms. Sorry, that one, uh, the beat pattern switched over to the bass, and if you're not paying attention, uh, it can catch you off guard. Uh, what you'll notice here also is that I um, will start to make my way over and find the door as early as I can. Most rooms, what I want to do is hover around the door as much as possible. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier and faster for me to be able to transition. Uh, so I don't get caught in a loop and have to replay the last eight or so seconds of music uh, while I'm waiting for the next room to load up. Because uh, obviously we don't want to waste any time. I'm getting hit a lot. These guys are somewhat annoying if you don't pay attention to where the spawns are coming through uh, which you can tell by these little um, these little things uh, little fuzzy fiery looking things if you're if you're time if you time everything right and you can um, you have the right spells up like equilibrium 
uh, you can pretty much stomp on them as soon as they come up, uh, which obviously saves you some health, but uh, can also make things go by a little bit quicker. This will be the last room. So the main uh, speed tech here in this game is trying to A, not get hit, but B, save your... Uh, you want to save an equilibrium for the final rooms. Uh, that way you can get through them just a little bit faster uh, and it'll uh, go through to the, to the next level quicker. Uh, so next up here we are on Mountain. This is um, the Viper Vizier's uh, domain. So we'll meet him in the next song. These little blue guys are kind of annoying because they just chase you around. Uh, and if you don't get a good gap, uh, they will just run into you. Uh, so they can be annoying once they get in a, a, a large group. Okay, these red enemies will chase you down as well and they stack up, but they kind of ram at you almost like a bull uh, in, you know, stereotypical video games. So you got to be careful of those guys when they spawn. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I didn't get hit there. So that's, I hit the equilibrium a little bit early. But there we go. And continuing on, uh, you'll notice as the combo goes up, my, I will end up getting another use of equilibrium. So. The main trick is you just want to make sure you got the timing for the songs down so you know where your patterns are, where your, uh, where the loops are. So you know which rooms are, which rooms associated with which loops uh, you can uh, use your spells in or, you know, which ones you have more time in. One of the very neat things about this game is that each room is its own, uh, each song is generated randomly each time you play through. So you not, you're not gonna get the same room layouts uh, multiple times, which is really fun and adds that extra bit of replayability because yes, you are playing the same songs over and over, but you have different rooms and different patterns and different things that you need to watch out for in these rooms. So one of the big tricks is to find where the exit doors are uh, as soon as you can uh, and make sure that you're there because otherwise uh, if, if you don't get into the next room uh, it will loop the song uh, part and you're stuck there for another few seconds. This is one of the safer songs. Uh, the loops are pretty long and uh, there's not usually as many enemies in each room so if you get hit or you miss uh, you miss your beats or whatnot you're not as punished in this song So it can, it can, making sure that you hit all the loops on time and that you know uh, what segments and where each song loops uh, is a big benefit. Now this room, I always hit this equilibrium because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not prepared for all of the, uh, the insane difficulty jump in this song. Uh, you you kind of get yourself into a little bit of a lull and then you get into that section and you realize, oh, what is that difficulty spike? That's uh, that's a typical spike that you'll see um, in some of the harder difficulties. Uh, Trivial likes to keep to one 
for two beats at a time. Um, it doesn't typically drop three, at least until after this boss or this boss and then afterwards. So it's, it's a, that room specifically is a big um, difficulty jump. And if you're not careful, uh, you can miss out a lot on that. All right, we're just gonna make sure we stomp as many as we can to help out. Keep that one equilibrium. So I want to keep, okay, I have at least another couple of rooms. I have, I think one or two rooms. If you look very closely at that bottom right hand corner, the little flat room tells you um, it's a basically a warm up room for the boss. If you need to uh, wait, um, or if you need to heal for whatever reason, um, it does have uh, sets of notes that you can pick up and heal or get your combo up, whatever the case may be. So we're going to hit the equilibrium in the next room. And what that's going to do is just make sure that we can speed through and hit the um, get the boss get the loop to hit at a good time for the boss to spawn make sure everything comes through properly although this is a big room equilibriums and big rooms are not as uh, beneficial just because it's a big room and it's uh, not as easy to get enemies up to you but I did have some really good enemy spawns there so I had the, all the chaser enemies that would come after me so they came to me and just made things a lot easier this is the uh, second boss of the game is Viper Vizier and we hit that timing perfectly Viper Vizier is going to kind of roam around until he gets to this point then he will charge uh, but when he charges he does block off a bit of the arena with his body so you can't actually run around where these uh, the red uh, area is I'm gonna heal here your your spell in boss rooms does get changed over to the main uh, the first spell that you get of the game which is Epiphany, which is just a general healing spell. Uh, but that is Viper Vizier down. That's our second boss down and out of the way. Lost a little bit of time there, but that's okay. So this game, uh, as I said, it was a student-developed game uh, in 2007. It is available uh, for free uh, to download online. Uh, it's through the DigiPen website, um, but if you go to the uh, speedruns.com page for Synesthete, uh, it I have linked the the DigiPen, the page for the game uh, to download. I highly suggest uh, if you're interested in this game that you definitely uh, go take a look at it and also go check out the music um, on YouTube so you know what you're uh, getting into what it should sound like um, because again we do kind of make sure that we don't miss any loops so we kind of run through it a little bit fast and then the end of the songs are going to be a little bit different. Oh, yeah, I missed that loop right there. Uh, that's unfortunate. I had uh, considered hitting that equilibrium, but I didn't think I needed it. But you can tell where these loops are if you listen to kind of the symbols rising. Um, they, that's usually your your uh, easiest uh, way to tell where your loops are going to be hitting and repeating. So yeah, that's that's one of those uh, segments where if you uh, if you're not careful and you're not positioned right, it's very tight and you can lose uh, time just by 
where you're positioned and uh, not getting across the bridge in time. Do we have a moment for a quick donation? Absolutely. Sweet. Um, I have $43 from Zokubun, who says, Donating for that hand cam incentive, but the music doesn't stop there. Let's make that Zuda run even more hectic with that sound shuffler. And yes, indeed we should. Uh, with that generous donation, uh, we have met the hand cam incentive for the Project Diva showcase coming up in a little bit. Um, and that also means that uh, if you would like to see the music and sound effect shuffler for the Zelda Ocarina of Time randomizer bingo, um, please get your donations in for that. We're at $21 out of 200 needed to make that happen. So thank you very much. That's a really, really nice donation. And that's that's a really interesting um, thing to do with, with the, ran the randomizer is to randomize it even more change up all your sounds and everything. That's gonna be something I'm looking forward to for sure. We are on to the uh, third act here. My favorite act uh, with uh, my favorite song, two of, two of my three favorite songs from, of this game. Uh, this is definitely my most favorite song. And as I'm talking, I missed the beats to start off with. So already starting off, Starting out great. That's quite all right. This is a this is just a very fun, energetic song. Uh, just a lot of fun to play through. Um, the boss in this area, I absolutely do not like. He does not like to play fair, uh, which is kind of funny because this uh, this act is named like a child. Uh, and the boss is named Count Stabbington and he kind of has tried to turn this world into like a childlike playground um, based off of you know whatever he's wanted uh, but he doesn't like he doesn't like to play fair and doesn't like to play nice uh, when you fight him so it's just kind of a f kind of just funny that he likes to turn this he wants this to be like a playground, but he doesn't want to play nice and play fair. Um, that's not a, I always forget, and I've played this, I don't know how many times at this point. That's not a loop. If there's some of these songs you think are loops, or some of these loops you think are but they're actually not like that wasn't a loop because we hit it before those bass drum beats uh, but there's still a little bit to catch up on so this is another one of those safe kind of songs where if you're if you think you're a little bit behind you're probably actually not Uh, I will say if uh, you want to, we do have a little bit of extra time. Um, if there's anything else, any other donations or anything else you would like to read out or need to read out, uh, I'd say today's now's a pretty good time for it. All right, perfect. Um, well, I don't have any other donations, but um, I did want to mention something that is uh, coming up here. So um, as you know, we met our hand cam incentive for uh, Hatsune Miku Project Diva uh, Mega Mix Plus. That's a mouthful. Um, we also have, uh, donation incentives of Zooter. Uh, we have a bid war open right now for Windjammers. That's going to determine what character Metroid Master is going to be playing as during that game. Uh, that's going to be early in the, uh, early morning Monday. Um, as of right now, uh, Steve Miller is in the lead with $43 and every other character Gary Scott, Loris Biaggi, and Claus Wessel has zero dollars to their name. So if you want to impact that, whenever you donate, you can not only apply that donation to the bid war, uh, but also to uh, open incentive. So you get basically bang for your buck twice. I'm still so happy that somebody's uh, demonstrating Windjammers. It's such a fun arcade game. I agree. Uh, that a lot of people don't know about, and it's just so f it's so fun to play because you, it's 
it's real. It's a really interesting take on like arcade sports. Yeah, it's so much fun. I really hope if anybody, if you're gonna be around uh, in the morning, that you'll that you'll watch that because it is such it's such a joy to watch and play. And Metroid Master is gonna do a great job. So we have slipped into the next uh, boss song, the third act boss. Uh, the song is called This Is Hardcore. Uh, you'll notice that's a, uh, you can kind of tell why it's named that um, going through the song. You'll hear it uh, quite a bit, but this is where we'll, we'll face off against uh, uh, Count Stabbington, and you'll see what I mean when he uh, doesn't like to play nice or fair. Gotta find the door here. It's back over here. One of the nice little benefits about this game um, that's good for new players is that... Um, you can elect to focus on only one or two beats. Uh, you don't have to hit all three. Uh, the only time it penalizes you is if you just miss click uh, the beats entirely. It doesn't uh, penalize you for not hitting a beat or hitting the wrong uh, or not hitting a beat, you know, leaving one open. Oh, hit that right on time. Uh, but yeah, you can you can choose to leave uh, like the red one open and just hit your blue and green, and it's not going to penalize you. Um, it's great for people who are not heavily into rhythm games but still want to try uh, because you can just focus on the two beats that you want. This is where Count Stabbington does not play nice. Uh, he likes to dis- in this section, he will disappear. Uh, and you have to stay moving, otherwise he will just pop up uh, and hit you. Uh, and obviously you lose health, but you also lose uh, some beats to hit him with. Uh, they don't show up when you get hit. Uh, so it, not only are you losing health, uh, but you're losing extra time to hit him with. Uh, this second phase, he likes to spin around uh, and summon enemies. Um, but uh, the ads are usually easily dealt with. Uh, but that is, this is hardcore. Oh, we've got uh, two songs left here. Uh, as we've taken down, um, as we've taken down uh, Count Stabbington. Uh, so like I said, I'm choosing Equilibrium here just because uh, it's really the only spell that is gr good for speedrunners uh, because, again, extra speed and stomping are uh, pretty nice. Uh, the, there are other various spells that will increase your combo counter, um, that will heal you. Um, some other uh, spells can get rid of enemies or get rid of enemy spawners uh, but the animations for those can take pretty long uh, and you don't get a lot of benefit uh, from that whereas I can just easily sit here stomp 22 enemies and then run to the next room So we, uh, at least I like to stick with Equilibrium. It just feels like it's the strongest spell and it's the second spell you unlock through the game. Uh, it's literally, or it's the first spell you fully unlock. Uh, you start with one and after you finish the first song, you unlock it. So it's with you uh, through essentially the entire game. That was just looking a little bit sketchy with all the uh, enemies that were there. And that was Elation. We are now down to uh, the final boss of the game. 
uh, in the, the final song of the game. This is uh, another one of my favorite songs in this game. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun. We don't get access to Equilibrium, but we don't need it. Uh, we don't need Epiphany either because we're not really going to be taking any hits. Um, so our spells are kind of dead, which is okay. Gives us just the ability to focus on our beats. Uh, but we're coming up. The final boss is uh, uh, the Namikans. It is basically the antithesis of what you are as the Zakeman. This uh, phase, you have to basically fight against uh, the Namikans to get the um, to get the beats. Um, I've been still trying to figure out the best timing and way to do this because he does heal after picking up um, some beats. Uh, but there's some timing here at the end of the song that uh, makes it so that if he has a little bit more health uh, coming up to that point, it's a little bit easier to take him down. Uh, but he does repeat some of the uh, early boss phases from all three bosses. Um, you'll notice that he'll go into uh, this. That first one was from the uh, Viper Vizier. Uh, then he'll come up um, very similar to um, the Voxel King. Uh, but he has a much wider beam. Uh, that he he will if he hits you once he will end up hitting you multiple times you just kind of have to deal with it uh, time is coming up here very soon uh, it'll come up when you see uh, game complete and this is the part where uh, the loops at the end of the song kind of make a difference because it will play this this little loop again, and if you could time it right with the connection of uh, the two, time. Uh, if you could time it right, you get a pretty quick uh, pretty quick time here. Uh, Thirty thirty three is not too bad actually, uh, especially for missing a few um, missing a few loops that I've had here and there. But uh, that's quite all right. It's, it is very hard to play rhythm games and talk about the rhythm game at the same time. Um, but yeah, that was Sinistee. Um, like I said, it's, it's uh, free to play. It's free to download. Um, you can search for the game name um, in Google uh, and it'll pull up. Uh, otherwise, you can also go to the uh, speedruns.com page for Sinistee. Uh, and you can then um, go to the... Um, uh, go to the resources page within that and I have the link there set up as well um, it's a very fun game like I said to play also just really neat to see that four students uh, develop this game that honestly is just very fun and very very unique there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of other games that are out here like this um, that are a combination of the run and gun and also rhythm so uh, I love to show this off whenever I can. So thank you, uh, Speed Stuff for Charity, for letting me uh, show this off. Uh, and thank you all for your uh, donations towards Lead. That's a very, very good charity to help out. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys around. Thank you so much for having me.